There's only one individual in pro wrestling who represents Pepsi, and that man represented AEW's peak, but also the beginning of its decline. When AEW got into the CM Punk business, it was like if Fire signed a three-year deal with Kerosene. CM Punk is one of the biggest stars to walk the face of the earth in pro wrestling. But like most top stars in wrestling, he comes with a lot of baggage. Punk thrives under strong leadership and organization. Despite being difficult to deal with in WWE, again, as most top stars are, WWE was able to squeeze a decade of money drawing storylines and red hot merch sales that once rivaled that of John Cena. Say what you will about Vince McMahon, but he's a carny at heart. To deal with the locker room filled with egomaniacs who all think they should be top stars, you don't necessarily need a McMahon, but you do need a strong man. AEW was hitting on all cylinders and seemed to be just the place for Punk's comeback tour. That is, until he exposed them through a social media controversy that compromised the AEW product like if a pro wrestling narrative was bacteria. CM Punk's time in AEW was a microcosm of the promotion itself. A hot, memorable start. One that set a positive tone early. Punk had great matches and even a pair of world title wins, only to fall apart due to infighting and paranoia facilitated by a leaderless environment where the garbage men ran the disposal. This is strictly an employment analogy. Nobody's calling anybody trash. Chill. Except for QT Marshall. He is trash. Now I'm just playing QT. You know we love you. CM Punk's Brawl Out and Brawl In were telltale examples of a promotion that didn't know how to handle its most flammable asset, but also didn't know how to part ways with him until their lawyers had to get involved. AEW diluted its product by adding a third television show to placate CM Punk. But Punk was gone a couple months later, with no brand split and a fraction of WWE's audience AEW having three shows felt excessive and essentially killed the Rampage brand name not too long after the show did over a million viewers for CM Punk's debut. Rampage is now the Sunday night heat of AEW, while Collision is like a mid-2000s Smackdown, when it was clearly the B-show. Hurricane Phil ran through AEW and left a stench on the promotion that continues to linger. In the wreckage of all these CM Punk controversies, AEW found it difficult to move on. Not only did the product suffer, despite signing one free agent after another, but they seemed obsessed with the CM Punk drama. Punk debuted with WWE as the promotion continued to pour it on AEW. Punk signing continued a disturbing trend of top stars like Cody Rhodes and Jade Cargill leaving the promotion only to go to the competition and come off as even bigger stars. Like most origin stories of challenger promotions, AEW woke up the sleeping giant that is WWE. And come 2022, it was WWE that got hot and could do no wrong. By November of 2023, CM Punk's return kicked off a WrestleMania buildup that is unrivaled. It was the culmination of WWE's two greatest stories ever told, between the Bloodline and Cody Rhodes' story. WWE's ratings and live event numbers skyrocketed. AEW suffered. AEW's year-to-year -year average viewership fell by over 100,000 in 2023. AEW surpassed 1 million viewers two times in 2023, but they haven't hit that milestone since February 22nd of 2023. 2024 will very likely become the first calendar year in AEW history where the promotion didn't have a single show draw over a million viewers. AEW's desperation to increase ratings in the face of TV contract negotiations have led to bad booking decisions. The worst of which was AEW revisiting its disastrous CM Punk situation by advertising the promotion would air the previously unseen CM Punk footage from All In when he fought Jack Perry. This in reaction to a podcast appearance from Punk who essentially described the situation exactly as it had happened. AEW's goal was to clear its name during an internet controversy, but all it seemed to do was confuse its own TV fan base, most of whom are not familiar with Dirt Sheet Team. 
If you follow the ratings for the CM Punk angle, many of the younger fans seem to think this was a sign that AEW may be teasing a match between Punk and Perry, which would mean the return of CM Punk, AEW's biggest star. AEW did one of its best ratings of the year for the surveillance show, but that came and went. AEW didn't build momentum to its current storylines coming out of that show. The opposite happened. AEW's 819,000 viewers for the Brawl In recap was a huge increase from the 752,000 the week before. But AEW Dynamite fell to 762,000 and bottomed out with 683,000 views the week after. It's worst viewership in years. Sports competition aside, this tells me that there was a fan base interested in CM Punk's appearance on AEW TV, but once they found out that wasn't happening, they left. This was a particular problem in 18 to 34. AEW tried to use its cousin Phil momentum to build towards an NWO-like angle with the Elite, but it continues to hover in the 700,000 range. Thankfully, MJF will be a much needed boost. The first Dynamite after his return almost hit 800,000, though he wasn't on it. Instead of building steam to its current storylines, which AEW did try to do through the airing of the brawl in footage, AEW effectively tricked itself off these streaks all while coming off like a jealous spouse who still wasn't over their ex. 